So I just use an X-Acto knife and I'm gonna quickly run through my cutting pattern. So I, I like to start on the inside and work out. So I'm gonna, and, and I also like to get the hard stuff done first. Um, so what's gonna be hard for me in this design or, or sort of tricky because I have to get really close will be the, the little man up here. These little, the eyeballs will be quite tough. Um, the, all the letters will be, will be difficult. Um, but I'm going to save those for last because they're sort of on the outside of my design. So since you're cutting, uh, if, if you work in, you end up putting more strain on the, on the mylar. So let's say I cut the outline of the eye first and then tried to cut the eyeball. Um, at that point that I was cutting the eyeball, there would only be a little thin strip right here connecting the white of the eye to the, to the rest of the, the stencil. So I would be working really hard and, and kind of tugging in some cases on the, on the mylar and that would put a lot of strain on this little tiny bridge right here. So working from the inside out reduces that strain on the design. So that's, that's one sort of, to me, crucial part of stenciling is, is working from the inside out so that you're putting minimal stress on the, on the mylar as you cut. All right, I'm, anytime I start to cut, I get nervous because if I mess up a little bit anywhere, then I basically have to start all over again. That's why I like to start with the hard stuff first, usually. Um, so I'm starting with a eyeball right now, or a pupil, I guess I should say. So little bitty circles are quite tricky. Um, I find it helps to hold the, the, the exacto blade almost vertical. So I'm cutting as vertically as I can. Cause this is really, it's like drawing all over again. Now I've drawn the entire, or I've cut around the entire interior line. So before I, I make my close off, before I close off that, um, this, this piece with that line there and that line there, I'm going to cut the outside line by not making these two cuts, that's going to increase the stability overall of the, of the mylar in this area. So you notice my finger is pretty close to that blade there, my left finger. Um, that helps hold down the mylar in that area. I keep my finger nail facing the blade and I'm typically not cutting towards my finger. To get the pieces out, there's always a little bit attached left that's left attached. So I, you know, I just break it out. Oh, maybe I'll do the little guy up here. He's going to be tough. So you notice there's lots of, obviously, lots of curves in the letters. Like that, that little piece of the U right there will be tricky. That little, leaving that little bridge right there in the E, it's going to be tough. But, you know, you just go do it. That's the letters cut out. Okay. I believe that's it. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the mylar. It's like I saw a little stencil. We're in the shirt prep stage. And so Neil brought me these shirts. These are all washed and they don't, they were not dried with fabric softener. So that means that the ink is going to be able to adhere directly to the cotton. Okay. So this is how I stuff shirts. And this is important too, uh, because you wanna sort of flatten out the shirt, get it nice and even, and you st stuff it. And that sort of helps you center later on. What I'm doing when I'm shaking these out is 
getting the shirts a little more square. So I'm just pinching the top. I'll show you in the next one. But what I do is I pinch the seam at the top of the shirt. Make sure I'm not pinching any extra fabric on the back. And just uh, whip them. Looks like we got a little bump there. I like to start my first print on sort of a throwaway shirt. So if there are, are any mistakes, it's on this first one here. <laughs> 